Hey, PV Squirrel here, and I have some really great news. I just got back from the Cancer Care Alliance and learned that my white blood cells are down now within acceptable levels. They're hovering around eight. And I guess that's supposedly amazing because I had a lot of nurses coming out and uh, laughing with me and, and joking with me and it seemed like I, it was kind of a spectacle. And so uh, to understand more fully, I guess, I've been having two pints of blood withdrawn every Friday for several months now, since August. And then those stopped completely in uh, maybe about a month ago. And at that time when they stopped, my hematocrit was at 43 and my white blood cells were very high. Uh, my platelets were very high. And at that time, uh, the goal was to create this iron deficiency in me so that I would stop generating red blood cells. And the test is to see if I'm low risk, mid risk or high risk is to see how long it takes for those blood cells to begin proliferating once again. And so I've been doing the <clears throat> control groups I mentioned in the last video. I've been keeping my alkaline diet. I've been continuing to run at 120 beats per minute for my heart rate. And I've been continuing to practice my meditation. Uh, I do centered and exhilarated meditation. And then I've been continuing to practice my uh, positive mindset. Just um, I'll allow the depression to happen uh, for three to four hours, you know, where I'm just laying in bed depressed. And I will uh, choose after a luxurious amount of depression time to disassociate from my depression and to choose to have uh, five positives to one negative is what the Gottmans refer to it as. Um, they found that in a relationship, for example, when your partner is doing something wonderful to you 85% of the time, it feels like all the time. And when they're doing something very negative to you, and it, even if it's only happening 15% of the time, it feels like all the time. And so I've chosen to uh, let my body feel the depression. And then when I'm not feeling the depression, because I've disassociated it from it uh, to 85% of the time, allow myself to feel positive, um, even if it's a pretend positive, uh, just because it allows my body to remember that 85% of the time, and, and hopefully it will feel like all the time to my body, that we're still getting stuff done in life. We're still moving forward with trying to heal, and uh, we're not giving up. Uh, so that's the positive mindset. Um, I've tried to embrace, for the last several years, uh, this outlook of feeling centered and exhilarated at least 85% of the day. Uh, I made a, a pact with myself a while back, and at this point, I think it's been two years now <clears throat> that I made the pact to feel 85% of the day centered and exhilarated, and, and um, at least in the last year, it's it's at 99% of the time now. I only really ever lose uh, calm and curious, which is that bottom of the centered and exhilarated spectrums of emotions, um, maybe for five minutes a day tops um, and that's just allowed my body to feel very um, fast and slow at the same time it, it opens up a space where I can feel my my gentleness and my uh, inspiration leading me uh, but without sacrificing the the cognitive aspects of um, there's a Harvard Business Review uh, 
from 2008, where a study suggests that we feel 31% better um, at being creative, at thinking intelligently, at being productive in the workplace when we feel good about ourselves. And um, so what I'm finding is that not only have I stayed consistent with these four control groups, positive mindset, fitness, diet, meditation, um, but that the gentleness, which is new for me, uh, which I, I think is helping, um, it doesn't have to hold me back from living a full life. I can live and feel about myself in a way that is still 31% uh, more intelligent, more productive, more creative than when I'm feeling depressed, than when I've lost my calmness and my curiosity. Um, and I can still lead from a space of gentleness. And so for the past month, I've been practicing mm, setting an alarm clock has helped at the top of every hour, uh, just checking in to see not only am I still feeling centered and exhilarated, but uh, am I also feeling gentle? Am I leading from my gentleness? That's the new part here. And it's taught me a lot about my breath. Um, when I want to make sure I'm moving from gentleness, but I'm still accomplishing the tasks I need to, it's really helpful to just, um, at first I would lay down and it's, I'd just stop breathing and wait till my body starts breathing for me, which would start with a very long um, exhale. And the inhale would take a minute to pick up. And then after four automatic inhales, what do they call that, involuntary breathing? Then my chest on the fifth breath would expand very large. My intercoastal muscles would have my rib cage expanded. My body would just want to stay at this top, most expanded part of the breath, then for four more breaths, where my body would only even really want to exhale half of the oxygen that's in me, and then inhale again. And I was just watching my body do this. Um, it still does it. Um, but I'm more used to it at this point. I'm more used to speaking from my gentleness. Um, in the four control groups, the diet, the alkaline diet, I've chosen to, um, when I break the diet for a cheat day here and there, to only break it minorly by having maybe brown rice syrup in something. Um, I used to be a little more extreme with my cheat days where I'd just go crazy. I think they call that the what the hell effect. Uh, you know, I'd eat ding-dongs and butterfingers and stuff. Um, so no longer is that happening on my cheat days, which were rare to begin with. But um, with my running, um, I'm being more mindful of my heart rate. I'm not letting it actually skip up to 145 or 150 beats per minute um, like I used to. Um, with my meditation, the centered and exhilarated meditation that I do, which by the way, I've written a book on, and if I can figure out how to put a link to the book, the book, the book is right here. Let's see if that works. If, if it doesn't, if I can't put a box on the screen to click on to go to it, um, I'll put it in the description. Anyway, it's completely free. I don't charge for it. Um, it's just this meditation that's worked really well for me that I've arrived at an understanding of based on my experiences working with uh, Jungian types and neurofeedback with the Otmers and understanding the neurobiology from Dr. Dario Nardi down at UCLA and reading a lot of Dan Siegel's books. I, I finally came to the realization that as you're moving towards the Jungian approach state of decision-making, in your left brain, it starts with feeling curiosity at your left ear. And then it, it moves forward through carefree alertness, mindful observer, which is when you can do emotional regulation, um, inspired decision-making, and then fully exhilarated. 
but that's all the spectrum of exhilaration in the left brain. And then the right brain spectrum actually moves back towards the occipitals, which is something I learned from the authors and doing the neurofeedback is that we start with calmness by our right ear on the right brain. Um, we move towards deeper relaxation, an embodied observer, which is different from the mindful observer back here, and then deep peace, um, a felt sense of knowingness or gnosis, as they call it in the Celtic religion, all the way back to the, the occipitals, um, which you could call full centeredness, perhaps. But as you engage the centered and exhilaration spectrums at all, just even with just calm and curious, the more you spend time in that meditative space, the more your ego is becoming less unhealthy. Um, you're not associating as much with the negative aspects and thought patterns, and you are um, not identifying with your thoughts and emotions as much your identity kind of steps back to the mindful observer and the embodied observer. And as you spend 85% of the time in those two places, uh, the identity even steps back once more to what I call the orchestrator that kind of orchestrates the centered and exhilarated parts. And um, as I spend 99% of my time here in the orchestrator identification, uh, the meditation I can tell is taking me to a new place as well beyond that. I don't know what that is. I, it might be the shift from identifying as consciousness to awareness. I, I've seen that in some books. But the key here is just you could do a meditation on feeling centered and exhilarated and maybe go back to a memory where you felt centered and exhilarated. Just meditate for 30 seconds a day on that memory until you get that feeling in your body. And then that's it. And then just try to approach situations where you're talking with others with that feeling. Um, and slowly that will start to um, cause the ego development, moving towards healthy ego. I think back in the day with ego development theory, they called it movement from uh, persona shadow to healthy ego to transpersonal to unitive consciousness. I think Ken Wilber threw in another piece there. Some other people have thrown in, but those four have stayed the same throughout ego development. And it's really just that bringing in the talking piece while keeping your left differentiating brain and your right um, integrating brain in a parasympathetic bridge because you've stabilized the parietal ridge basically by just being calm and curious. And then as you're able to maintain that in situations where you're speaking with others, it builds the sense of empowerment that you have the discernment to tell when it's an emotionally safe situation to be vulnerable and open and undefended um, based on feeling exhilarated while feeling centered. Um, so I think that people have been practicing centeredness meditation for thousands of years. Why hasn't that easily led to the egoic development um, my, my thoughts in this lifetime are just that it's because we haven't been bringing the speaking portion in, in a way where we can feel centered while speaking. Um, just cause most of the time that we're speaking in society, uh, it can feel very disassociated. Uh, people can feel like they know what's best for us. They can feel like people are shaming each other. It just doesn't feel emotionally safe. And what I learned from the authors is that, that you just lose that stabilized parietal ridge and your alpha goes back below um, theta um, if you basically are in a situation that feels emotionally unsafe that somebody's not supporting your shining eyes is what you know the Irish in me wants to call it is just supporting people's shining eyes while talking you'll notice the look up when they're thinking of happy thoughts and um, you can ask them what they what they were just thinking whenever they look up, if they smiled when they looked up, and they will come back feeling centered and exhilarated. So that's another way to do it. Um, but the more we practice speaking to each other in a way that feels centered and exhilarated or calm and curious, um, the more that we're all going to be experiencing ego development, which if that 
kind of takes hold with society, the more we'll be able to think 31% better and start really solving the bigger problems around climate change or, you know, any of the problems. Uh, hopefully we can address poverty. Um, and so support groups is another thing that can help with the positive mindset there. Um, I host four different support groups each week where people start by sharing a memory where they felt centered and exhilarated. And then we just set an alarm clock to every 20 minutes where we just talk and we just practice speaking from the centered and exhilarated space. And in so doing, uh, we'll lose the exhilaration because our bodies haven't trained. We're, we're still doing the training wheels aspect of it in these circles. But at the 20 minute timer, when the little bell sound goes on my phone, we'll all take a moment of silence just to revisit the centered and exhilarated memory we shared. Um, and I've, uh, I've brought this to some of the nonprofits that I've been <clears throat> consulting with and they've got my motivational posters on the wall. Uh, I'll put a little box here for that. If you want the free motivational posters, you can go here. Um, but uh, it's really nice that they can have a meeting room open from 8.30 to 10 on a Monday morning where it's optional that the employees can just go into the meeting room, um, share their centered and exhilarated memory, and then click into whenever that alarm goes off every 20 minutes to have that moment of silence, revisit the memory with each other, and then just keep talking about how things have been going. That alone I've watched create such a culture change uh, of inclusivity and diversity in a workplace. So that's the meditation I've been practicing that has helped feed into my positive mindset for sure, but it's allowed me to um, move and speak from a space of gentleness, I'm finding, um, without losing the capacity for really intellectual thinking, because I feel good about myself. I have my parasympathetic bridge. Um, so that's it. I'd love to get more detailed and maybe have a set of videos that go into each of those components, but I'm about to go on a three-week meditation journey in the middle of the Amazon, and I'm not sure um, when I'm going to be able to get around to doing that. So before I go, I at least wanted to uh, put this video out for everyone. My white platelets, my platelets are down, my white blood cells are down, it's been a full month, my hematocrit has not risen beyond 43. The nurses think it's amazing. Um, the real test is going to be, you know, if I can keep my hematocrit and my white blood cells down and my platelets down, having polycythemia vera um, for several months, right? For a year. I don't know if we'll ever know if I'm cured, but... I know that the symptoms will go away, that all the itching, the blurry vision, um, that'll be exciting. Um, it's already drastically reduced. So I think that's the end goal. Um, perhaps in two years, if I've kind of stayed down at the appropriate levels, we can say um, that I feel I'm cured. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna keep practicing this gentleness approach to movement, to speaking, to public interaction, which I'm starting to realize that centered and exhilarated book that I wrote is probably the greatest asset I have on my side to be able to live in this world coming from gentleness without having to really dial back my productivity. Um, it's definitely rounded out the edges. I'm not gonna be as exuberant um, or extreme in the ways that I leave gentleness. And that's all that's really changed. And so far, so good. So um, we'll see how it goes. PV Squirrel, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.